Hello, welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to show you how to create a character design used starting from monochromatic. Uh, this is going to be an easy, somewhat sketch. Uh, start off with shape and then we're going to start trying to identify in form and slowly fleshing out those form and uh, trying to separating the material from the form and create uh, whatever that we wanted like certain material on the um, character or something all right guys well um, running out of time so let's get to it all right before I go just to let you know that if you have any question or any suggestion on any topic that you want me to paint or draw or whatever post them down in the comment and I will usually get back to you. Uh, also, don't forget to click like. I would really appreciate it. Enjoy your coffee. Bye bye. About, um, let's pick here 25% uh, of the background. Um, and then I'm going to use 21% uh, brightness on the character here. So to get the silhouette. So it's the background 25, this 21. So it's only 20, only 3% apart. And you can get this much contrast and again um, beware when you are trying to pick the value for the background because if the background is dark then most likely that your um, overall character is going to be dark if you replace it with a lighter background so uh, in here the reason I experiment with the dark one is because um, I'm trying to play with the light and sometimes it's easier to see the light in the dark because you you could get more idea which part of the light is coming in. So over here, I'm just going to have the light coming from the shoulder that are closer to us on top. So basically front a little bit, front, middle, a little bit via the right side of the screen. So now I'm just creating this silhouette. And as you can see, within the silhouette, even though I use 100% opacity and 21% brightness, you can still see the variation of the light. And now I'm going to use... Uh, another layer and I make a selection of the character and I'm just getting the big shape and I zoom out trying to get the shape and now I kind of got that shape going on with just light and shadow then I'm trying to get the skin color which I use a really light color but that's maybe a bit too light um, so I'm just trying out that yeah, the skin color is about 34% opacity so it's a little bit lighter uh, then the background, uh, it's only 10, uh, the background is about 25, so it's 34, so it's about 10%, 15%. And now I'm adding another layer and adding uh, the front uh, leggings for the front flap, um, sort of like a... Then I decided I didn't want it. Um, and then what do I do here? I still have a lot of time, it's only like a couple minutes in. So I'm just gonna redo that because I think the contrast was slightly a bit too much in the beginning and I didn't really like it so I want to reshape the helmet a little bit so I'll try to make the shape of the helmet first and then dodge it a bit to get the the more idea of of how light I want this armor to be or how uh, what kind of base um, metal um, values do I want and then add some top part of the shoulder blade I mean yeah shoulder plates sorry um, and the light will come at the top of the sh uh, top of the chest there and then after you're playing that you you are a female you have like a more protruding chest and on that cutoff there'll be shadow underneath that so if you break them down in plane then it will make it easier for you to identify which would be light and which would be a shadow. And instead of having a, a straight uh, or a little more straight shape of the shoulder, I decided to make it a little more like a sphere instead. And again, always try to limit your value when you paint. 
don't go too far up the ladder or make them too different if they're 30 percent apart then that's already not so good you have to have uh, the value still closer together unless you decided one is in the bright light and the other one is in the shadow like the cash shadow or something then that you try to cater, create a composition which is different than character design on the character design you would kind of limit the value here but uh, we're not talking about yet that would be in the environmental painting because the environmental painting you're going to have to deal with light and shadow so in this case uh, just limited your palette for now and also trying to use the same routine every day like I said you gotta kind of try to do this every morning and just practice with the limited value you're gonna start with the dark or using my method like using the, the dark uh, background then I probably did this about 10 maybe 10 to 15 of these in the July month of July and I select some of them to uh, put it on patreon uh, and some of them doesn't turn out well but I didn't post it um, but a lot of them are decent and I only put post a decent one and some of them looks uh, decent enough uh, that I could take it further so now I'm just moving helmet around and now you can see and as if you notice uh, from the silhouette to this point these are just a big shape that I try to uh, make a, a sculpture of it so and now I'm starting to add a little more value now just only on the body itself excluding the helmet only two value there and on the helmet, you have a little more value because I um, add a little more value up there so that I can assign uh, the right uh, metal material. So it still looks not too metal metallic, but it's it's kind of like it's going to be uh, a sample for the rest of them to have to follow on uh, on to how the metal should look for the overall. But then it's going to be a little more contrast afterwards. So. And I always make the character separate so I can make a selection and paint on the selection so I don't have to worry about going over line. But that's it's not always the case. You can always go, over, you know, paint normally and it's okay to paint over the line once in a while if you want to paint it normally. But um, for speed, uh, this one kind of works fine. And also experiment with the texture brush and if you're not comfortable with texture brush with yet uh, I would recommend just use default brush until you get used to it for maybe a month uh, practice you have like the whole month of uh, July uh, next this month is what uh, August uh, to practice the whole thing so you know and then the next month you're gonna get a new tutorial from me so try to master one uh, process first and then once you master one process and have your own routine going on then it will, it will be easier for you to move, jump onto one process to the other process. Because um, in this one, I start out with dark, and you can just kind of start out with dark and use this process for at least like a few weeks. And then if you get comfortable with it, then continue with it and then try to maybe alter it a little bit, changing your value on the background and, uh, and so on. But the background should either be, uh, usually not, not should. Uh, either be like dark which is like 30 percent to 25 to something or light which is 80 percent 75 80 to 85 um, the middle I haven't done anything the background with the middle range yet because usually I'll save the mid range for the character itself so it's kind of a little trickier to make a, a character with the mid range but um, I guess it depends on what you are comfortable with but also you know once you get used to the regular default brush then try to play with the the uh, the texture brush, and I would notice a lot of people who like try to play with the texture brush, but the result doesn't come out as good. Is because you don't know what it's for, and every, you're trying to scribble it uh, and just trying to strike gold. Um, but that's um, sometimes you get like a good result, but the result won't be consistent. So I rather have you known um, the default brush and make sure that everything that put every stroke you put in you you know what they'll do and you know what they'll you know what purpose it will serve so that would be better so now i'm just kind of designing the helmet uh, it turned out to be okay i guess so i'm just trying to keep on inside and again um this kind of design it doesn't i didn't just uh I mean I do kind of just design on the go in this one but it just doesn't come I didn't just uh, come in today and 
trying to okay uh, if I know how to paint already right and I never paint a night before then it's not just like one day I just decided oh I'm just gonna paint a night so it's not like that so I've been painting uh, or design this similar scheme for a video game for a long time so I don't really have to look for the reference but um, you have to because every time we design a video game first thing we do is we do research uh, we do uh, we put a bunch of reference material um, in the big folder and we share them so any concept artist that tell you they don't use reference or they might not be a concept artist because everybody use reference at one point or another maybe you not or maybe they don't use it now because they have a they build an archive of uh, memory in their head or archive of image in their head so they don't feel like they need it but way back everybody used reference um, the the in the beginning how I started to draw I start to copy so I copy a comic book artist or whatsoever and then I eventually I get comfortable with come up with my own stuff right so and then uh, I go to live drawing to figure out how to draw uh, people's body or human body then uh, after I get comfortable with it then I can just you know wing it on my own without having to look at any reference but to get to that one point that where I want it to be which I'm not there yet um, to get to the point where you want it to be you got to use all kind of resource uh, whatever it takes and you know don't be um, a lot of I don't understand when a lot of people are talking like reference is not good or blah 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 you're using reference you you're not copying them when you're making uh, your own piece you just when you're copying them that's mean you're doing studies and when you make your own concept art you are trying to use all the knowledge that you learn you are trying to use all uh, the mileage of your study to implement it to your piece and then it's gonna make a better result so and now I should explain what I do here um, basically it's basically the same thing that I explained earlier with the other one so now if you notice um, in the previous one on the, the other night with the horn it's just two value because you have one base value so you don't have to uh, deal much with a lot of value changing so within a limited value you just have one base value so in this character you have two base value one is a, one value is a skin base value and the other one is an armor base value so you have basically have two bases value so you're gonna have to limit it value range for the shadow on the skin and for the mid tone for the skin whatever the, the real color or the, the mid value or the base value of it is and then the armor itself will have its own base value but when things are falling to the shadow the, the shadow line is going to follow so so the armor is going to always be darker than the skin in this case and the skin is always going to be lighter but uh, in, in within the light and shadow you're going to have to kind of limit the value range, value range for the light and the shadow itself and then add a little ring light just to separate the um, chest piece from the other arm um, and just keep doing this every day and don't expect to watch one of my tutorial and be able to nail it um, you're gonna be able to do get close but to nail it for the first time probably not unless you've been painting for a long time um, at least a year or so so now I'm just rearranging and checking the shape and trying to add a little bit more of under light or rim light just kind of add it a little bit there and usually if you notice I'm zooming out it's because I'm trying to um, look if I have the correct value for all these because a lot of time when I zoom in I'll get a tunnel vision and if you notice like if you zoom in and not just on just one part and trying to add a lot of detail on part a lot of time you go too far and it doesn't fit a lot of time it doesn't fit in with the rest of them if you go using too much value that's why I say use a limited value range of like maybe 20 to 30 percent apart should be good enough on the brightness and again try to break things down in plane which uh, which plane is on top which plane is on the bottom which plane is facing right left front back uh, you break all the shape down to geometry then you get the, the the closest value to the right value or the, the, the closest depiction of the render so those are really important and again in this exercise not using any 
um, from here to the initial um, the end sketch or the mono the end of the monochromatic sketch I haven't used any modifier yet I'm just using normal value I'm just uh, I mean normal layer and I'm, I'm just painting with uh, mostly 100% opacity but I mostly just to pick uh, the value from uh, the existing value here but in the beginning uh, I just pick the value right from the brightness like move it up about 10 move it up about 5 and trying to figure out which value would fit into this character so just practice on painting with normal I think you're gonna be benefit from it a lot and especially with this routine that I came up with you should benefit uh, you should be able to, to pull it off something decent if you do this every day and don't limit your time to 30 minutes you know maybe uh, limit your time to about an hour limit your time to about maybe an hour and a half and try to do something you know or maybe uh, the, the good way is you might already you know sketch something out in a sketchbook right and then have the design ready and then you do this um, you just do uh, draw it in Photoshop without scanning it in or anything like that just just look at your thumbnail sketch on the sketchbook if you sketch some design and then you're just trying to, to make a uh, render off of that drawing that you did on the sketchbook don't scan it in we don't want any line work I mean you could start off with line but once you add too much detail online I see a lot of people uh, they just they're too afraid to to paint over that line so that's why I say uh, just disregard the lines and just paint uh, and just make your painting look like what you do without using any line but light and shadow instead because sometimes you look at it and you're like okay now I'm trying to add a color using the uh, layer behind it and it just uh, ruined my silhouette on the color that I make with the spike on both sides so that's not good I decided to take it out it doesn't work because I already have this spike here and it's like this silhouette I don't know why I think about putting the back collar behind it. And basically, this is just like uh, drawing, except you're drawing with light and you're drawing with bigger, bigger patch of, of line. Instead of line, you're using shape. Um, and instead of um, using line convey use shape to convey and each shape will have its own value and those values are going to represent the plane of you know which one which way is facing the light the most basically just think of it as um, scalping in the 2d space and always have to think of uh, uh, x y and z which is you know the z space is the most important one because it's, it's uh, front and back so now I'm using a lasso tool and make a, uh, a layer on different layer and just paint a lighter gray and filling with 100% opacity so I'm making selection again and I'm just gonna make it brighter and eventually I'm just gonna go use dodge and, and now I'm just adding uh, the handle right there make a selection again and I'm gonna go a bit lighter and I mean that's only 40% brightness and I use 50% opacity and it's already make this uh, sword look like if I use 100% opacity on that um, um, then it will make it look even brighter so now I'm just kind of adding a little more detail on the sword And now I'm adding additional design on top of the shoulder guard or shoulder plates. And this one is going to be basically metal. So I like as light as uh, the blade itself. And add some, the texture brush make it look too busy. So I'm just going to go with flat value instead, but make it slightly lighter. 
So these are just basically the initial design. So it's not, um, I'm not going to into a lot of detail. I'm just going to more like a readability. Uh, make sure that each part of this read well and make sure that each part of this has uh, some significant impact on the design itself. Uh, like you see the, the shoulder part and you see the gauntlet. Uh, you kind of you'll be able to tell what it's made of like you know mostly on a gauntlet will be a bunch of leather leather strap and a bit of metal but at this point you don't see a lot of metal yet because I haven't uh, assigned material other than the helmet and the uh, chest piece uh, the rest of them look like a bunch of um, ragged cloth or fabric and leather all together uh, but then eventually I'm just gonna go in and once you assign the material, you'll be able to tell uh, which part of the armor is metal and which part of the armor is uh, cloth or leather. So material are materials are really important when you're trying to design a character. If you if somebody design a character with just a bunch of color and you can't tell whether it's metal or um, cloth or leather or something, um, then that might not be a very good concept art. It might be a good stylized illustration, but if you want to do a concept art, you have to be able to uh, distinguish the material. And um, let me know on the Patreon page if you want a material study tutorial, um, and then I will make make some of the material study. But uh, for now, uh, if I don't know if anybody want material study tutorial, then you can just basically uh, Google material study, and then you will um, see uh, how they how people actually do the study itself and if you look at it and you don't really understand it then uh, let me know uh, post on the patreon page on and then ask me for hey uh, please do a material study or something like that then if there's enough people interested I will make a tutorial on the material itself um, so now I'm just see again in this one uh, focus the uh, main focus is basically first is get the, the right drawing or the good uh, silhouette in the beginning then after that uh, identify the form the overall form of the whole body and then separating those form into a smaller form like break up the uh, the big form by just you know adding a big shoulder here's the shoulder part here's the torso part here is the gauntlet and here's the helmet so try to distinguish them from the body and then after that you then in this one is slightly different from um, first one so because you have two base color and what I mean by one is a skin that you see like the lighter part of this armor and one is the base color of the armor itself which is darker so you're gonna have to limit the color for both uh, palette the skin palette and then uh, the armor palette itself I know this sounds complicated but um, try to you know play out with it look at this tutorial multiple time and then you see uh, what I mean so on the skin itself um, the shadow probably shouldn't be as dark as the dark material but on the dark material the light shouldn't be as light as the skin so it's a limit between um, the value from the darker material probably be 10 to 15 percent different in the brightness and on the skin in from the mid mid section say if, if the value of the armor like the dark armor here is about um, 20, uh, 22, then it should be about 22 to 31, 32, or 35. And then on the skin, if it's brighter, like if the mid tone of the skin would be like uh, about about 40, then you could use from 35 to 45 for the skin on the brightness. You know what I mean? So yeah, just separate the scale for each um, base value. Then you you have a good turnout. And, but when you have like a really, really dark, dark value like occlusion shadow, occlusion shadow is when the object doesn't uh, get the light at all, uh, meaning it's going to be uh, uh, absent of light, then it's going to be really dark. So it could be like almost black. So it's about like maybe 15% or 10% brightness. It doesn't matter if the base material are light or if the base material are dark. If you have the occlusion shadow, it's going to be about the same darkness because it's absent of light.
now I'm still working in monochromatic so I work about monochromatic to almost to the end because I need uh, like I said when you design it's easier to solve one problem at a time and now I'm trying to solve the problem of light or the form uh, form plus design so that's two problems uh, design and form together usually you can like design first and then uh, trying to uh, identify form later and now uh, we just we just got the form and design almost there then the next step we can um, start to assign some color onto the existing value that we have here so the value are, is still pretty rough and then um, when we apply the color it should be easier as long as you don't if your brightness doesn't go way over 80 or way over 70 when you use overlay to apply the color the color should stick and that's why when you paint with the darker value it's a lot easier to use overlay on top but if your value is too bright when you use overlay the overlay is not going to catch the color so if you use anything in the middle when you use overlay middle of the brightness overlay will catch it if you use it where if your value is too dark overlay will not show the color on top of it if your value is too light overlay will not show the color on top of it either so be aware of that uh, and just you have to listen to me carefully every time because I would say this over and over and over and not a lot of people um, people still kind of get stuck in it and that's why uh, if you don't get something just come back to the tutorial again I'm breaking this tutorial down to two sections so it should be easier for you to um, identify which so again um, try to stick uh, solve one problem I have. So I make a copy of this layer and I'm just I'm going to merge the character itself all down and I usually from the beginning to now I just paint with normal layer. Now I'm using I'm using overlay on top of the background behind a character. I'm just going to use light blue and 30-20% 20, 20 opacity and paint it to give it some light and as you can see when I add some light the character is starting to pop out a little bit more from the background now I'm using overlay on top of the character uh, using the light blue again value similar to whatever I use uh, with the one under the background now I'm just gonna experiment and add some more light using a high opacity maybe 30% and just add some light onto the skin uh, it catches well and on the metal just a little bit trying to find which section of this metal will get hit by the light the most basically and add more light there there so now um, maybe a little too much so don't try to do too much um, trying to add the light on this area in particular the rest of them you can just kind of leave it and now I'm, I'm using overlay on top of the blade and make it a bit brighter I'm using a uh, hard edge brush and um, I use only the hard edge brush until you know I, re I don't really need a lot of soft edge brush soft brush are uh, sort of like second option like if you really want to make good transition then yeah but you can always use that and now I merge that overlay down to this character now I'm just going to use level and see uh, make a selection of the character use level yeah, I'm just going to make the contrast a little bit more, um, give it more contrast on the light and the shadow. Bring the shadow in a little more. So now it popped out really well, but I don't want to make it too dark because I don't want my dark value to go under 15% brightness. And that's really important. If you go under 15% brightness, it will be almost black and it, it will make everything look black. If the majority of them are dark, you don't want that. So now I'm using overlay and paint, just pick purple and fill it in. And I turn the opacity down to about 20, 27%, 25, 30%. Just kind of like has this subdue effect. Now I'm just going to use eraser, saw brush, uh, make a selection on the character and erase on the skin. And you see the skin uh, will become desaturated. Use 70% opacity on the eraser. So the skin look kind of gray in comparison to the purple that I have but then I change my mind and take it out so um, I'm just not just gonna erase on the skin but I'm just gonna use saw brush to erase like 
partially overall, as you can see over there, partially overall, so it's not just on the skin itself. Then I turn it on again and increase the opacity on that overlay. So I'm just experimenting to see which make it look. So I leave the overlay there, um, and then I have this brighter part of um, the overlay here. Um, this one I'm not using, uh, level or something. And then I had level before, and then overlay, and I use overlay about 33%. And then I make a selection, and I just paint the skin color. Uh, use a skin color from my palette or any of the skin color here that you pick fine skin color usually reside around here and a little more desaturated and lighter and when I paint that in if you paint 100 it will be really light so I'm just you tone it down to about 77 so there from there that we end up then I it takes me a while to experiment with this so I decided to come up with this one because I was experimenting maybe I'll lift this um, uh, background make it a bit lighter and then add the skin color so you can either have like if you want a background to be lighter also you can go back in the background and use level to increase the background and tone it up or down you know however you want it so just try to balance it out and it's gonna take a long time if you're just beginning to paint uh, it will take a long time for you to get used to uh, all these tip and trick uh, all you have to like but the basic thing that you have to know is you have to know what value to use and which and where um, and you have to be really good at rendering geometry that's one thing because all these part are geometry this is like a cylinder shape basically um, and so I'm just gonna show it to you what I mean um, cylinder so this is just basically a cylinder shape so and if you see how I light it, it's just basically like how I am I would light a cylinder. And this one also similar to cylinder, and I light it. And the highlight are connected. And these also kind of like a cylinder, because I change it to be a little curvy here. And you see the light from there, right? Light, light, and light. The light are connected. But it depends on like if it's go deep, then the light would fall lower, and it's going to come higher if the if the plane's higher because if you look at the side view of this it'll be like shoulder dropped and then and then arm and then go up again and be gauntlet so um, if you look at the top the light will move around because the light will hit this first right so this will hit on this section and then the light will drop and then you have the arm and the light will go up again but it depends on the angle this is not going the same angle so it'll go up this way slightly and then go down so this is where the highlight would be or the light right so basically it's that all right guys um on the next section we are going to add more detail and make this armor a little bit more refined i'll see you in the next section so once we got all this layer and i turn on that level a little bit and then usually i will like sit on it think about what i would add like okay should i thin the blade because the, the hand looks kind of weird and if i were to move if I were to move the hand, that's going to be a lot of work because I don't want to spend more than an hour on this. Hour. My plan is to spend a little bit, maybe an hour to polish this up a little bit. It's not going to be a finished illustration. It's just going to be a pretty rough concept for about an hour and a half. So I don't want to like overdo everything because um, this one is, to be honest, it's not super awesome. Um, I'm only going to spend some, some if, like, if I, and I didn't plan on to spend like, the rest because it's gonna take longer um, it looks alright so I, I don't want to spend I'm not too excited about it basically um, so I didn't want to move the arms so I was thinking maybe I should thin the blade but then in the end I decided ah, I'll just leave it there it's fine just fix the rest of them and then when I'm sitting around I would kind of thinking okay maybe I'll add multiple sword behind her so but it I would place it so that it doesn't conflict with this uh, silhouette of the collar um, I don't know why I'm thinking of, about adding the sword and collar for some reason. I kind of want to stick to that. I have no idea. And I moved the head forward a little bit because uh, from the last one, the head was not really, uh, it was kind of leaned back a little bit. So, all right, so let's get started. So, um, 
just gonna turn that off usually I make notes so that I will remind me what to do I make a copy of that overlay layer that uh, make it lighter in the back and I try to see if that would uh, make this look better or not if I make the background lighter and then I use some eraser to erase some part of it uh, so I'm trying to like if, if the background make it look good then I will and then I'm doubling on the contrast on the level um, that I put on top of the character and it, it looks fine and it erased the, the lower part of it on one layer so I double that layer that I made um, so it make more contrast by erase uh, the bottom part you see you see a bunch of gradient here on the bottom of it and then these are just the experimental phrase then decide that I'm gonna make a copy of the whole thing and if I messed up I still have the original layer so I merge everything down so that's the contrast of the character I have there and I'm gonna merge the skin down and I merge all the background into the back and now I make a duplicate of the character just in case I screwed up and then I want the background to be purple also so I have to make double layer on the overlay so I just merge the overlay back to the background on the purple and I have to erase um, the rest of the overlay on top so I invert the character erase the part that I don't need for the purple so it would merge in perfectly because if you don't erase the rest of them when you make a selection of the character it will have an effect of you have to when you merge an overlay down on the behind it has to be solid so either you merge everything all the way down or you have to erase part of the access pane that you don't need when you're going to merge it down to the character because the character just have the character right it all on the outside doesn't have anything but when you merge over it they have paint on it the paint gonna come with it and it will become some weird color so that's the trick of overlay so now I'm just um, and you know if you confused about this just try to make an overlay of like okay try to make one blotch of paint and make an overlay uh, paint over that part of blood. That's why I always make a selection and, and paint over the selection. And the behind selection has to be 100% uh, uh, opacity. If you don't have 100% solid opacity, when you merge an overlay down, it will change the color because uh, the bottom part is not opaque. Overlay will merge but will opaque. If your uh, base is not opaque, it will not go well. So now I'm just fixing the value on the, uh, the, on the skin on her arm a little bit. Make it less dark on the shadow basically. As you can see there's uh, some darker value. On the other side also there's a little bit of the value that are too dark. And some cast shadow from the top of the shoulder guard. So basically at this part we are just doing clean up so whatever part that's not clear like this part is a little bit too ambiguous or these legs uh, is a, a bit too not too clean so you gotta make the cleanup means you gotta uh, look at the proportion if it looks right look at the value if it's if it's clean it's it's I mean sometimes you want to scribble like on the the arm or on the some of the part that have caught or something but on the skin you want to make sure that the skin is either smooth or clean enough or if the texture is appropriately applied to that if it's the appropriate style some sometimes you see some uh, design that on the skin it has like text uh, texture brush on it but it still look good so whatever if it's appropriate then it's fine so in the cleanup process basically you just looking for things to fix or things that um, like right now I'm fixing that proportion or the perspective on that color to make it look similar or exactly the same within the correct angle that it's going into space so whichever that might look off try to fix it as much as you can it's you know every painting if I look at every painting doesn't matter how good it is I can always find some flaw everybody can always find some flaw there's always gonna be some flaw nothing is gonna be perfect so but you want to eliminate those flaws uh, whatever you can pick apart uh, try to pick apart your own piece and eliminate those flaws and you know try to fix it as much as you can and that's going to make your uh, character concept look much better if you don't have any don't have any uh, don't have too many mistakes because there's always going to be mistakes there's always going to be something's off 
is nothing is gonna be perfect none of the paintings but the imperfection that's what make it perfect most of the time but you got to you got to make it uh, you got to make a proportion correct first of all and you got to make all the angle of the armor look like it plays in the correct position basically and now I'm trying to make that uh, spike thing coming forward a little bit more by applying the tip at the tip of it it will be the, the the most highlight on the tip of it it's going to be the lightest right so and on this top of this blade too it's going to be lightest so it looks like it's coming toward you so that's a lot of contrast and I'm fixing the neck and fixing the perspective on the mask and adding a little edge to the front of it and maybe fixing the shape of it a little bit and look uh, fixing that curve on the collar so whatever you can find um, if you can see a little bit mistake like proportion if it's too thin too thick uh, if it doesn't look correct then fix it and now I make another layer behind it and I'm just going to make a uh, multiple um, sort maybe four of them just adding silhouette first just usually I start with shape kind of like same as drawing I like if you want to draw this shape it's fine but if you want to just do shape it'll be easier because you just make one stroke but make sure you have a nice silhouette Now make another one coming out on the side and make sure you have it on the right angle. And see everything's come into the perspective. You look at these, this one is the biggest one because it's closer to you. And as it go further, it's kind of like the perspective point that will get smaller. So those are really important. The foundation is everything um, and if you want me to make a basic perspective tutorial for the patreon post on a comment and let me know if you want uh, you know material um, tutorial pers basic perspective tutorial and all that kind of thing but I'm gonna apply some perspective part to the figure also but um, we're just gonna focus on, on the basic stuff if you on the if you want on the basic tutorial I'm just going to add that on to level 2 basic uh, tutorial. And again, contour line, make sure you know which way the, the bottom of the hilt of the hand um, which way the, the sword is uh, going like can you see the top or can you see the bottom or which way the contour line of the handle is going Then I just add a little bit of light and a little bit of shadow using texture brush and some shadow and a little bit of highlight in around the middle of the cylinder because this uh, piece are basically a cylinder shape. And I'm gonna fix. I'm gonna add some spike around. I'm not sure if I should. I'm just gonna try it as some spike. It's gonna be kind of tricky though because you have to show that the spike coming forward. And I decided not to because it's gonna be uh, too much work. Um, I might end up spending more time than I should because um, like I say most of these uh, I'm not trying to spend a lot of time on it so we're not gonna have a lot like on the level at level 3 I will probably spend maybe 3 to 4 hours accumulate tutorial uh, but on level 4 level 5 some of the tutorial go, tutorial go to like uh, over 3 hours because I have more time on those um, and but on this level, I just want to give you guys as much uh, knowledge as I can, so I make a separate tutorial for uh, different things, uh, so you can get more. Um, 
and now I reshape the side of the helmet a little bit, the wings and I'll probably have to fix the wing on the other side also and make it uh, look like it's as correct in the perspective as I can so it's, you're not gonna see it on the back side of it, it just, you're gonna see it from the front and a little bit in the angle basically And I'm trying to figure out how much highlight I should add on the torso piece. I'm trying to make it, because it's the same material as um, the helmet, right? So it should have a little bit of highlight on there. Maybe that's a little too much. <laughs> so I decided, sometimes I'll paint it and I'll look at it as like, ah, that doesn't look right. And then I just have to go all the way back into the history. And on the history, I have it about 40 level so you can set those up in Photoshop how many levels do you want to have uh, I have it only 40 if the, the longer you have the more memory or the more RAM we use so just limit it to like maybe you know 80 or 40 or something um, usually I'll save, save uh, the Photoshop file in the multiple file so if I screwed up way too bad I can go back to the older file and work on it so I don't have to have the history that long and now I clean up the silhouette of her body on the waist and try to make her waistline a little more feminine and on her hips also so I make her skinnier and once I make the body skinnier then I should make the arm slightly skinnier too um, so there just flat color 100% and try to get used to like I said you know exercise um, you don't have to go this far just go as far as a step one in monochromatic and practice it every uh, day every morning uh, just do maybe an hour or an hour and a half and go as far as you can and then stop you don't have to finish it so just just it's a learning process so it's kinda like when you sketch a lot and that's this is what it is you you have to treat uh, the beginning painting as sketch so you can like uh, do a lot of them try to make the best out of it and then you throw it away um, it's not because these are not expensive and these are just Photoshop uh, it's not like you're buying oil or trying to uh, make a, a masterpiece of oil painting and you plan it out all along and even in oil you still have to do a lot of planning by uh, making comps or all uh, you start with multiple comps and assign a value and make sure before you start painting in oil you have everything set up already um, if you see all the old master back in the day they, they don't just came up with the painting uh, they're planning everything they're making composition already and they already have a model set up and they already know which way the lighting is gonna go so everything is about reference so everything is about planning and make a good study uh, nobody just wing it and make it look perfect uh, I mean nowadays a lot of people can just wing it like um, a lot of concept artists do and this is what I just did but it's, it's not it's Photoshop, right? Because you can just throw it away. And it's just a good experience to kind of, you know, sketching around and trying to find new ideas, basically. And now I'm trying to fix the other hand that holding the sword. Uh, so you just got to think which plane uh, is the back of the hand facing and which plane is the knuckles facing. Yeah, some part of it's facing down, it's going to have a different value, and that some part of it's facing up it's going to have a, a lighter value so facing down is going to have a darker value so you identify it like make it the whole plane this plane is the whole plane here and this top part is the whole plane here so the value is going to be similar on if it's on the same plane the value is going to be similar and if it's round like this one is going to be round so it's going to be darker on the far further end so you have to think about that a little bit